Hello, and thank you for joining me for another Give Him 15 post. I appreciate it. Uh, before I do the post today, I have one quick announcement I want to make to you, and that is that we have someone impersonating me on the YouTube chat page uh, with picture. They've taken my picture, put it there, and they're saying they're me, and they're asking for money. Please don't be taken in by that. We've never asked for money on any of our social media platforms, and we won't. We just want you to know, uh, please don't be taken by that. I told you uh, a day or so ago that I would probably comment a little more on Hebron and what it means. I'm going to do that today. This is a very, very powerful post, and uh, the title is The Greatest Revival in History. I've heard a word from God, Chuck Pierce told me. I was excited. Chuck is a prophet, after all. What pearl of wisdom was he about to share with me? Directions for my future? A profound nugget of revelation? If nothing truly spiritual, perhaps at least something exciting, like who would win the Super Bowl? Don't laugh. He's done that before. I was expectant. We were in Israel, a place where Jesus had lived and ministered. Chuck probably tapped into the timing of Christ's return to earth or maybe who the Antichrist is. Who knows what he had picked up from the revelation-filled airwaves of Jerusalem. I heard Holy Spirit say, I'm going to pioneer Hebron again. He stated with a great deal of confidence. I, in return, gave him a mix of deer in headlights and you've got to be kidding me looks. What does that mean? I asked the prophet. I don't know, Chuck replied. What do you mean you don't know? You're a prophet for crying out loud, I reminded him. Well, I heard Holy Spirit say it, but I don't know what it means, he stated. It's for you. He'll tell you what it means. Prophets can be annoying. I wasn't completely surprised. Chuck has done this to me before. God will sometimes give him a word or phrase, just enough to entice me. I then have to dig and discern for myself what it means. It must be a game God and prophets sometimes play with we normal folks. So, I locked in on Hebron. The names of people and places in Old Testament times were important, their meanings often holding prophetic significance. This I stated to you a couple of days ago. There were one or two places in here where I did that, but I just really felt uh, impressed by the Lord to build on, on what was in the paragraph or two that was in the previous post. Bethel, for example, where Jacob had a profound encounter with God means the house of God. Jerusalem means the city of peace or wholeness. Hebron, the place Holy Spirit said he would pioneer again, means friendship. It also means league or confederacy or Federation. Though the word itself doesn't refer to a covenant, the concept is certainly there. Hebron is a strong alliance born out of a close relationship. Covenantal friendship is the phrase I use to describe it. Because of this meaning, God made it the final resting place of Abraham, the covenantal friend of God. In fact, Adam and Eve, Isaac and Rebekah, Jacob and Leah were all buried there in Hebron. It's easy to see its significance. And with this meaning in mind, covenantal friendship, Hebron became symbolic of several things. It's the highest city in Israel. Therefore, covenantal friendship with God is the highest or the loftiest privilege we are afforded. It is also the thing Satan most 
wants to steal. Hebron was the city where King David first set up his throne. Authority is released as we walk in intimacy and covenant friendship with God. Later in Israel's development, Hebron became one of its cities of refuge. These were cities structured and managed to protect individuals who had accidentally taken a life, a person, another person's life. The individuals fled to a city of refuge in order to prevent a family member of the slain person from enacting revenge. It was inconvenient, but better than vengeance killings. Later, the New Testament tells us these cities of refuge became types or pictures of Christ to whom we have fled for refuge, Hebrews 6, verse 18. According to the Talmud, the best lambs for sacrifices came from there. Hebron then pictures the salvation safety and refuge we find in Christ, the Lamb of God. Remember, we're talking about pioneering Hebron. Satan hates geographical locations that have become meaningful to God and his people. When possible, he seeks to defile them using perversions, violence, covenant breaking, idolatry, shedding of innocent blood, Hebron, as a type of Christ and a picture of covenantal friendship with God, became a prime target. And in the four centuries between Abraham and Joshua, evil giants had overtaken the city. In fact, the greatest of all the Anakim, or giants, Arba, made it his stronghold and renamed Hebron after himself, Kiriath Arba, meaning the city of Arba. By the time the 12 spies of Israel were sent by Moses to check out the promised land, three more giants, direct descendants of Anak, from whom the giants were spawned, had inherit, inhabited Hebron. This holy place, representing friendship and covenant with God, was now ruled by giants and was a place of terror. It so terrified 10 of the 12 spies, in fact, that they brought back an evil report of fear and unbelief to the rest of the nation, saying there's no way we can take our promised land. The giants are simply too big and powerful. So these giants had defiled the place that pictured covenant friendship and also pictured our salvation. Caleb, one of the 12 spies, was indignant, seeing that Arba and the other giants had defiled this holy city and desecrated the final resting place of the patriarch Abraham. He was angry. His response was to ask Moses for this very mountaintop city as his inheritance. We can conquer these giants and their fortified cities, guys. Caleb told the fearful Israelites, and I'll take the biggest. Because of the Israelites' fear and unbelief, however, Caleb had to wait for this opportunity. Forty-five years later, after 40 years of wilderness wanderings by the unbelieving generation and another five years of war, it was time. It's time now, by the way. Caleb, now 85 years old, said, give me my mountain. In asking for this piece of land, this warrior was asking uh, for more than a city. He was requesting the assignment of conquering the greatest stronghold of giants. The great warrior did indeed conquer Kiriath Arba and its giants, then renamed it once again Hebron, the place of covenantal friendship and intimacy with God, picturing our salvation. In the words of my prophetic friend, 
he pioneered Hebron again. In that special place, Caleb enjoyed a covenantal friendship with God. He also paved the way for, for it to become David's first capital and, of course, the picture of Christ. When Holy Spirit declared through Chuck that he was going to, quote, pioneer Hebron again, end quote, he was making an encouraging and wonderful announcement. I am going to empower you my people, the church, to confront and take out spiritual giants ruling regions of the earth, transforming these regions into strongholds of life. You are going to transform spiritually dark cities and nations into places where covenantal friendship with Christ can be experienced and from which the rule and authority of Christ, who sits on the throne of David. Remember, remember David started his rule there. Christ now sits on the throne of David, where, where Christ can now be seen in those cities. I did my happy dance. The church is moving into a new era. We will soon experience our finest and most productive season of harvesting souls. I believe that we, the body of Christ, will see at least a billion souls saved in the next 10 to 20 years, perhaps more than have been saved in the previous 2000. Portions of the earth that have been ruled by evil, spiritual giants will be liberated. Evil forces have ruled some regions of the planet since Adam's fall, but there is a holy invasion about to occur, a release of Caleb-hearted, fearless warriors who will thrill at the thought of conquering cities for Christ. We have a distinct role to play in birthing this new era, all that God does on earth is birthed through his intercessors. The praying church is about to step into its highest authority and its greatest history writing role. Pray this prayer with me if you would. Father, we thank you for your word regarding Hebron that we will conquer spiritual strongholds and giants. You have shown us through this amazing place that the key to overcoming giants and moving in high levels of authority is covenantal friendship with you. We rule from there. So our first request is for higher and higher places of intimacy with you. May we live at Hebron. We thank you for the salvation, refuge, protection, and covenant friendship with you we have found through the Lamb. We also know, however, that our King and Redeemer gives to us his warrior nature, that we, like Caleb, are more than conquerors through Christ. We ask you for higher levels of this nature to operate in us, that we would have a fierce determination to see people free from sin, oppression, and every attack of Satan. May we truly be liberators. And we pray for America. We ask for the greatest revival in the history of this nation to burst forth. We pray for the youth, our schools and universities. Come to them with your power and love. We pray for inner cities, places overrun with poverty and hopelessness. 
We ask you to be the hero of these without hope. Save them. And we ask you for revival in the church. Send us your fire. Let the greatest renewal that has ever hit the body of Christ come to the American church in this hour. And may we see our destiny as a nation restored. We will be your instruments to take the gospel of Jesus Christ and his kingdom to the ends of the earth. We will. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. And our decree is that is this. We decree that spiritual giants will be defeated in this hour. Amen. Thank you for joining me. I appreciate it.